I'd like to let you in on a secret. Right now, I'm wearing a mask. Ooh. <laughs> That's true. There's no seams or dodgy wig that I can fling off in a twist reveal that will put M. Night Shyamalan himself to shame. But the mask is there all the same. See, right now, I'm doing my best impression of a public speaker. And as you can see from the slide behind me, I'm totally nailing it. <laughs> <laughs> but most likely, you're no different. You see, these masks that we wear, they're different parts of our identity, dependent to run the, upon the surrounding environment. As an example, you probably let down your guard amongst friends or family compared to that all-too-common pressure of the first date, where you're desperately trying to put forward the best parts of yourself. An identity is a funny thing, composed of a vast array of social and personal elements. All the bits that make you, you. Everything from your age, gender, sexuality, presentation, your beliefs, who you want to be in life, where you want to be in life. And so we would use these parts of us as masks to best fit the given scenario. My name is Carla Heverson, and I'm a documentary photographer. It's one of the masks that I wear. What I mean by this is that I use the camera as a way to explore ourselves, each other, and the common masks that come to the surface when documenting a specific subculture or community. And it's two of those communities that I've documented over the last year that I'll be exploring with you today and seeing how by using the camera, identity can be either reinforced or subverted. So for the first community I documented, let me paint you a scene. Every weekend, in the heart of Lincolnshire, the woodlands around us erupt with the sounds of conflict. But no one dies in the war that is being waged. Instead, plastic pellets are shot from imitation firearms, slamming into the chests of these fictional soldiers. This is the S of community, whose vibrant mix of players commits to these mock skirmishes with ruthless efficiency. Now, similar to the reenactment community, uh, airsoft players will often buy their uniforms from military surplus stores and then customize each one for their needs. The replica weaponry used in these games can often seem incredibly realistic compared to the real-world counterparts, and is often, again, customized with the same level of care. What is effectively a game of tag with BB guns is through the usage of costume elevated to fictional warfare where every player becomes the protagonist of their own action movie. Importantly, the games act as a structured environment of play conflict, allowing a structured environment of play conflict, reminding me personally of the games of cops and robbers that I remember playing as a kid. Only now, instead of gun-shaped sticks, the kids are also armed with imitation weaponry. When it came to documenting this community, I was fascinated with how when in front of the camera, the person they were melted away, and I was left with a hardened soldier staring straight into the lens. And this identity or mask of soldier or fighter remained common throughout the community. And it's partly why in the series, each person is titled not according to name, but to the uniform and weaponry they used. Again, in front of the camera, I saw an action figure, a toy soldier ready for this fictional war. And that, to me, is both a benefit and a fatal flaw of the camera, where you can highlight singular aspects of a mask being worn and then communicate that to the audience. In this case, of the airsoft community, I communicated the idea of the soldier and through the camera showed this to an audience. Unfortunately, by focusing on uniforms and weaponry, we lose touch of who they are, who they are when removed from these superficially violent elements. We focus too hard on the picture in front of us, and we lose touch of the person underneath the uniform. Now, as a photographer, this didn't sit right with me. In my work, I'm hoping to explore identity fully and represent my subjects not just as one mask that they may wear in a day-to-day -day scenario, but as who they are as people. And so I went back to a figurative drawing board, and I looked for a new community to document that would allow me to achieve these goals. What I found profoundly changed the way that I view photography. So for context, the boxing and amateur kickboxing community within Lincolnshire is currently thriving, with local gyms putting on what are called fight nights. Now, these fight nights, the act is a way for a community to sign up and put months of training to the test, surrounded by crowds of cheering onlookers, often entering the ring for the first time. 
However, the community and the fight nights also have a shared purpose, that of allowing this community, primarily composed of young men, to aspire to become something they wish to be. Strong, resilient, a fighter. And that's where I came in, with my cameras. Over the course of several months, I documented each fighter before and after. Now, minutes before the fight was due to begin, they would enter the camera's gaze and face the lens as an unknowing contender. In these moments, I saw the common mask of fighter come to the surface, now being used as a shield. The gloves went up, the eyes locked, the stance shifted into a well-practiced pose, and in those moments, they were boxers, through and through. But it was in the moments afterwards, when the bell had been rung and the victor had chosen, that I began to see a different side to who these people were. After such a physically exhausting experience, the emotions rose to the surface. Some, as we can see in the bottom row, in the middle, fully embraced the identity of fighter, with the adrenaline surging through them and the thrill of victory a constant reminder. Others, regardless of the outcome, simply took the moment to sit, to ponder about what they'd managed to accomplish. And so, in the effort of trying to discover more about them, I asked them some simple questions, wondering why they had entered the ring in the first place. What had prompted them to undergo such an experience that I myself couldn't do? The responses were stunning. Underneath this identity of fighter lay an emotional undercurrent of vulnerability and motivation that had taken every person from where they were in life to the ring's embrace. People such as Charlie. Now, Charlie, he's fighting to prove to an absent parental figure that not being part of his life is the parent's loss, not Charlie's. Or Jamie. Now, Jamie, after a second competition, now lives for the thrill of the fight and the intense training required for these fights, providing a level of structure for someone who's still growing up and finding their way in this world. Or James. Now, for some context, it was his first night getting into the ring, and he left with a draw that he was intensely proud of, rightfully so. And I wanted to share to you today his story, his words, as I believe they'll do a far better job of telling what he has to say than pitches could alone. I'd always been close to my grandfather, who was a former boxer and local champion in Grimsby. I took up the sport when I was 14, but I was this shy, bullied kid who didn't think they could do it. When my grandfather passed away from Alzheimer's, I was 17. He'd left me a pair of Lennox Lewis gloves that he'd sparred in. After that, something inside me knew I should take this sport seriously, not even as a career choice, but just for him, you know? It was a way of getting to know him, his mindset, and his way of looking at life. He was the world to me, and boxing has become my way of keeping this memory alive. Now, all of this came about through the usage of the camera as documentation. But more importantly, it was followed up with a conversation. Through this conversation, the portraits become alive, and they tell a story that doesn't just represent people as one mask that they may wear, but begins to tell their story in its entirety. And that, to me, is the beauty of photography. You see, the camera, it's an incredible tool, and it's been around for now almost 200 years. Through digital, chemical, mechanical means, it records whatever we put in front of it. But I believe, as a photographer, that it's our duty to embrace the simple idea of human connection and conversation, to collaborate with the subjects we document, to tell the stories they wish to be told, to represent them in the way they see themselves. Through this, a deeper understanding can be gained, and not just the parts that they are. Because, on a larger scale, the same applies for all of us. We are all more than the individual parts that make up who we are. We are the highs, the lows, the lived experiences, the stories, the victories and defeats that make us whole, make us human. And I hope that by having a look at these communities today and the stories they have to tell, that you'll start to see 
that by having this conversation with another, we can begin to see the bigger picture. Thank you. <laughs>